I'm not allowed to talk much about it, but because the fans are picking up on it and because you're asking me, there there is a deep connection. How exciting is it for you to finally see the reaction to fans of Fallout uh, now that it's out? I mean, the show is incredible. Thank you. I, I'm so excited because the fans that I'm meeting on the street are not fans that I feel would have known me very well before or come up to me. So it's kind of a geeky moment for me because like these dudes are coming up to me that never come up to me in my life. Um, and if anything, know more about the show than I do. It's a bit embarrassing. And um, I feel like I'm, I've got such an open heart about this show. So mm -hmm. it's making me excited. That's awesome. Now, as an actress, what personality traits or characteristics do you find challenging to bring to a character who you know is like 200 plus years old? First of all, when you, it's interesting when I saw this, what I, I just remember thinking, Cerita, whatever you do in this character, it has to, I mean, the fact that there are people kneeling and taking off their shirts to your image, it has to have... <laughs> It has to have some gravitas, right? Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, this show's way of gravitas is quirky and humorous and many things. And so it, it, what was interesting was trying to avoid playing this icon that they, certain the cultish leader thing, um, and just going more for the scientist and winning wars with her words and or with a gun, but being mm -hmm. specific all the time. And that that became my work, you know. What nice. I mean? But there's so much of her backstory that's still a mystery. So do you have an idea of how she spent the previous 200 years or is that still a mystery to you, too? So part of it is not a mystery, but part of it. I mean, you can imagine the questions I was asking Geneva and Graham and. On set, when they would come, you would see the actors sidle up to them, hoping for a morsel and um, they're amazing people and you could tell they wanted to give and they would for you to do the scene at hand but it was tricky so I know some but they nod like a priest at moments where they're not mm -hmm. giving it but you feel like you've been blessed and you walk away it's very confusing so does this mean that there might be a chance we could see Moldova return even if it's in the form of flashbacks so we can sort of flesh that out I mean if there's a season two, I'm just going to stand outside that studio. I don't see why not. Do you? No, I, I yeah. want to know more. Yeah. Um, even though I don't think it was ever explicitly stated, some fans believe there was a bit of a romance between Moldova and Rose. How did you interpret their relationship? See, it's interesting because I'm not allowed to talk much about it, but because the fans are picking up on it and because you're asking me, there there is a deep connection and I can't talk about it, but if there is a season two, hopefully that is going to be, because it also involves Kyle's character. You know, there's a lot going on. Um, I mean, they showed so much in these eight episodes, but all these questions, I mm -hmm. can't wait to see. Yeah. Yeah, no, I found the psychology of her keeping Rose alive, even as a ghoul, to be very fascinating. Yeah. Um, now, in what ways do you expect Moldaver's actions to ripple into season two? Well, first of all, I'm very curious to see what happens post the bomb right immediately after. Like mm. how that level of survival or what happened to have Moldaver go from scientist to the level we see her at. And then also that span of time. How? Yeah, that's what I'm interested in. That sounds great. I am also interested in that. I don't think it's even conceivable that you guys won't get a season two. I just love the show so much. So thank you very much for your time. Coming I'm from really you guys at Comic, but that's amazing. Thank you. Oh, thanks. That's so nice of yeah. you to say. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Moises, dude, it's so nice to meet you. The show is incredible. How, how awesome has it been to see everybody's reaction to it now that it's out? It's been amazing. It's been amazing. It's been two years. So, it, you know, it's it talk about a slow build um i'm just happy that the the you know the fans of the video game are, are seeing it on the screen and and saying that every detail is um just how it is in the game and and that we we're telling an original story in the world of fallout and i think that that's really special speaking of uh the details in the game were you pleasantly surprised to see how well you pull off a fallout uniform 
<laughs> well, when they measure your biceps and your and your and your shoulders, I I think it it should. But um, you know, I think everyone looks great. I think um, you know, it looks it looks. Almost... I think you're being too humble. The colors look good on you. They don't. Not everybody pulls off blue and Can yellow. My eyes pop. <laughs> like you, Wolverine, few other people, not a lot, you know. Um, now, was it more difficult to keep a straight face acting against a brain on a Roomba or opposite Jack Black dressed as Nacho Libre? <laughs> um, luckily, Jared has directed me in, in, with, with Jack, so uh, I was able to maybe not look at him and keep the dry humor going. Um, the Roomba was just something else. Um yeah, that was that would that took a lot longer than expected. So it was more frustration than it was uh uh keeping in laughter. Oh, <laughs> uh, dude, that's that I mean, it pull, you pulled it off cuz it's like it was such a funny scene, dude. I love uh-huh. I love that whole back and forth. Um uh, now Norm uncovers significant secrets about Vault 31. Have you had any discussions with anyone about how this discovery is going to impact Norm moving forward? I haven't. Um, I've speculated, but at the end of the day, speculation is going to lead nowhere. Um, I think. Well, I don't know if that's necessarily true. Sometimes it leads somewhere. <laughs> um, I'm just. I'm just prepared for anything. Uh, I think it's a. It's a real. It's a predicament to say the least. And um, he has a couple options. He has a couple options. Um, they don't look great, but um, <laughs> yeah, I think. I think everyone's in a in a predicament. To be honest. Yeah, no, it, it seems that way. I really love the way that the, the season ends and, and sort of sets up everything going forward. It, speaking of which, in season two, how do you expect Norm to react when he finds out what kind of person Hank really is? And if we get the chance to to do uh, season two, I think it's uh, I think he's sort of deciphering that on his own. Um, maybe not quite to the level that Lucy has because it was told to her face pretty much. Um, yeah, let me, let me not... Uh, mess this up i don't know what i can say but um i think that you know uh norm has an intelligence that will allow him to to sort of understand what the situation is and maybe he's going to ask questions to one of his fellow pod potties yeah no that's good that's good i think you're safe i don't think you i don't think you spoiled anything man i think you did a great job Dude, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Like I said, I I love the show so far. Or I mean, I've seen the whole season, but I I'm, I can't wait for season two. I can't even fathom you guys not getting a season two at this point, dude. It's incredible. Thanks, man. I really appreciate that. No, I appreciate you. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>